Hey everybody, so this is going to be the year in review episode of just the stuff I backed, why, where it's at, where it's going. Maybe it's interesting to you, maybe it's not. It's not going to have any new board games in it, but you know, it's the things to remember that's come out before. Uh, basically, I do this every year. This time I've decided to change up the format just because I needed some time. So <laughs> it's uh, the quick way. You can hear in the background all the machines that I have going on at the same time. I've got stuff rendering. I've got stuff printing. i got all kinds of crazy things going on. So um, just have to bear and deal with it. Um, and that's pretty much the theme of 2021, just having to bear with it. And uh, let's get started and uh, take a quick look at uh, what I got here. This is my list. This list is all the crap I've backed. Oh, yeah. It's a lot, right? Done in different categories. Start with different games and uh, go from there. Um, most recent ones first. And then kind of grouped by the companies. Because I tend to buy from the same companies. Have some brand loyalty to a few different things. And, um, you know, you do too, right? That's everybody. First one up is uh, something that started in 2021. Uh, and then I think it just finished right now. This is, oh, wrong one. Where'd it go? Did I get the wrong one? Hold on. Let me fix it. One second. It is, uh, the big shuffle. All right. It looks like I'm gonna have to make some changes just within the, the app here. And this was a noir card game. As you can see from previously Pluto, it finished up uh, about a week from when I record this and um, looks pretty cool so far. Looks like they're starting to get their pledge managers and other stuff like that going on. So uh, that's pretty fast. That's cool. Card game, not a lot of minis, if any. So uh, I ex fully expect this to be fine. It's just black and white. I like the idea of noir stories and uh, being able to... Uh, storyboard quickly using the uh, tropes that are present in this one will help me develop uh, different storylines and things I want to produce for other pieces of content that I want to enjoy. So next up on the list was Witcher Old World. And, uh, you know, it's exciting. The next season is out. I've only watched one or two episodes of season two on Netflix. I went back and forth on this quite a lot. Do I want it? Do I not want it? Ultimately, I think I'm going to enjoy the story. I tried playing the video game, and the controls are just garbage. So uh, I didn't end up uh, finishing that. But uh, board games and all that kind of cool stuff. Let's jump over to Camp Page page. Uh, you can see if you needed to be reminded. This is out on GameFound as a pledge manager thing. So, looks like it could be fun. Reminded me a lot of, uh, of some Awaken Realms stuff that I did enjoy, uh, such as um, the Fall of Avalon. Which one am I thinking of? Tainted Grail. And um, it just had a lot of those vibes, and I wanted to continue that experience. So I picked that one up. Then, one game I've been waiting for from all the other types of uh, vampire games that were out there, all the other vampire masquerade games that were out there, this is the one that came closest to what I wanted, and this is chapters and uh, lots of creation diaries, lots of updates, um, things that they're creating. Uh, they're almost done with it, which is nice. If you checked out the game at all, it had minis, and you played through the story, and you got to fight different... Uh, uh, types of vampires in different eras and you got to play through a lot of them so i bought pretty much everything <laughs> that goes along with it i went back through the pledge manager made sure i got all kinds of cool stuff these guys did offer some painted options as well that weren't that expensive so uh, that was nice of them i don't know if they'll be able to keep doing that but um, this one i'm looking forward to and i believe that this one has announced its retail partnerships so if you wanted to pick this up through a retail outlet it will be available there so that's cool then next up on the list was eon trespass odyssey they are about to come up with their next kickstarter kingdoms forlorn in a few weeks i'm excited about that one too everything seems to be looking pretty cool they're just starting to close the pledge manager as you can see on that one what was this? This is Ancient Greek Kingdom Death. And you got a big white box instead of a big black box. You got lots of monsters. 
and uh, they all have the unique different things to them. I used to teach mythology, specifically Greek mythology. So uh, for me, it's pretty cool to see all these different characters that uh, I've have a lot of background in uh, studying and uh, it goes well with Lords of Ellis. Um, and the way that this one plays out is gonna be interesting in that the more you damage the monster, the harder they become to fight as uh, they get backed into a corner and become desperate. So it'll be interesting to see how that plays out considering how the boss battles in a lot of other games start to get boring as you kill off the enemy. Uh, this one just ramps up in difficulty and let's see how it goes. So it sounded really interesting. Uh, then I also have on the list Imperium Contention, but I believe I received that two years ago. And I know, f I'm pretty sure that this year is the year that I got Assassin's Creed, um, the Brotherhood. This is after the second game, which is still the best in the series. And, uh, I wanted instead of a full person shooter or front, a first person shooter, I wanted a first person sneaker. And that's what this is supposed to emulate. Um, like I said, everything arrived but it arrived at the worst time uh, in my year, some of the worst times in my life, and I have not had a chance to do more than have it sitting next to my bed. So hopefully this year I'll get a chance to play it. I'm really excited about the Da Vinci um, stuff, little tanks and other cool things that they came out with I thought were neat. I even got a copy of uh, Hudson Hawk. If you watched that movie, it had some Da Vinci things going on in it. Bruce Willis and uh, Sandra Bernhardt and Danny Aiello and a bunch of other crazy people doing crazy, crazy things. It's a dumb movie, but I love it. And I got that movie to go along with, with this one. So it's here. It's all paid in full. Somehow they knew that there would be a huge delay. <laughs> and uh, they told people from the beginning that it would take two years instead of one for them to get it together. And, you know, even with everything else going on, Triton Noir, they, they nailed it. So good for them. And next up on the list was the Ever Rain. This is going nowhere. So if you notice in the updates uh, for this one, it says mass production wrapped up. They finally said something in December. Long, long stretches between things. They have had really bad communication. If you go into the comment section, it's all hate. Um, I bought this as a late pledge. So, um, you know, I know I'm going to get it. Hopefully they didn't lose my order, but I've been tracking it. It's just delay, delay, delay with no additional information. They did the same thing on all of their other Kickstarters. So if the game's really good, people will buy it at the retail position, but it's got a lot of upset backers just because of the way the, these guys run. Um, some of your favorite games or my favorite games, the, the creators do the same thing because maybe they're understaffed or they're not um, paying attention because they're busy making the game. I get that, but, you know, people need to be updated, you know, at least every other week, I think, is a good amount. Saying, hey, we're still in production. We finished a few things. Anything. That would be helpful. Just to be able to continue to trust that you're working on it and that you didn't run away with the money there's no, nobody should be trusted <laughs> at this. So, um, you know, that's kind of the point we pay ahead so that you can get your dream made. You keep us informed and you provide it. That's, that's the contract. Then it got Solomon Kane. This came in maybe at the end of last year or the very beginning of this year. I have the second wave. It's on the way. I got a notice from quartermaster. So, um, it's almost here. It's almost f fully complete. I love the components. Everything looked gorgeous. Still haven't had a chance to play it, paint it, etc. Uh, but I, it's one of those I'm really looking forward to. I'm almost through the complete Conan stories of Robert E. Howard on the audiobook. And then Solomon Kane comes up next. I wanted to get a good feel for it because it is very tied to the source material. And uh, I'd love to know more about the character. I did buy the movie Solomon Kane, which has almost nothing to do with any of it because it's a prequel to even the writings but uh james purefoy i believe is in it and uh, it's a fun action movie that takes place in a puritan kind of mode where he's just a really bad person and uh, that can be fun so there's that next on the list secret unknown stuff from sentient cow games this arrived years ago 
But the reason why I'm updating you on it right now is that um, it's been delayed and you can see the preview, the things that they wanted to come out with, um, you know, the pigeons with uh, helmets on, two-headed cows, Amelia Earhart, all the, the crazy things that they, they want to put out there. This part isn't going to make so much sense to you if you haven't played the game. There are lizard creatures that you fight against. It's uh, a bunch of different types of conspiracy theories made humorous. So, you know, there's been a lot <laughs> going on. Um, as you can see, these guys are just having a ball. Looks like Hunter S. Thompson there. Just, you know, playing with all this stuff. These guys have a great sense of humor. I played the game with them at a brewery a few years back. Um, they sold out of their full supply, and then they wanted to create a big Hollow Moon expansion, a Rise of Atlantis expansion, more conspiracy theories, things that um, make you laugh. I like it. I like the games. I have not finished painting them. Uh, I want to play this all the time. It was a great game. It does need a little bit of streamlining, but it has a fantastic book and tutorial that gets you started right away. And uh, if you are looking for a fun game that doesn't take itself seriously whatsoever and can kill a few hours, then Escape from Dulce, any of the stuff that they've provided, uh, they keep trying to improve the product and uh, you know they're, they're great people. So I, I recommend it if you can get to it. Uh, I got some more stuff going on. What else do we got here? Uh, Relic Knights, perennially. Let's see when the last update was. Uh, June 26th, six to seven months ago. Um, yeah, that's how it's going. So uh, they created a uh, website that you can go in and try to pay them money and they'll piecemeal send us you know stuff i got a couple of models i didn't even get all the things that they said that they had printed off uh kingdom death themselves are going to take over the duties of of creating the uh, twilight night that they were supposed to be uh creating and making and anything else that's tied to kingdom death kingdom death uh adam poots games is going to handle it on their end so at least those pieces will arrive, but no idea when that'll happen. Uh, Poots has got his own things to worry about. So, you know, he's got gambler's chest to get out the door. He's got all the other things that people have already paid for. So adding one more thing to his plate was, you know, not a great move, but at least he'll be the one honest enough to get the stuff I paid for into my hands, even though John Cadis over at uh, Ninja Division Soda Pop Miniatures is a roll of the dice if he'll be able to accomplish it they've gotten some things in people's hands but the reputation is garbage so it's hard to say some people have been buying it and if those people are happy great for them then we're moving on in the black formerly starfighter inc it was a video game i backed and i stopped caring a long time ago they might have updates they got stuff on a discord but it was supposed to be a uh, super realistic uh, space sim. Maybe it's too realistic, but I just got bored with it right away. Kingdom Death! As I was talking about before, Adam Poots Games is doing everything they possibly can to continue working through uh, all the challenges. They have, uh, as you can see, New Year, New Omicron. They're like, uh... This thing popped up. They got some great art. And uh, it's probably going to delay us. Like, yep. Yep. Probably will. Is there anything you can do about it? Nope. Probably not. <laughs> but they are trying to get the gambler's chest out. Uh, they, they broke up the different waves. There are a few expansions that are almost ready to go. And have been for a long time. But uh, they probably need some spit polish on them. And a, a few other things. So I would expect something this year. At the very end. Maybe. At best. Uh, with a gambler's chest, and they won't be running any other sales. They won't be running any other content that's new. Uh, uh, they had their last one uh, for this year until the new stuff comes out. So they are working on it. People aren't happy with how long it takes, but this is one of those games that you'll be happy with the work that he did on it. So one game from one publisher, that's how that goes. So we're going to roll it back. You can see uh, my card sleeves. 
this is a US store it's a little bit different um, let me show you back to the list card sleeves awaken realms 3d printers that's the next thing we're gonna be talking about so let me go back where'd it go oh I lost it again something happened um, oh you know what let me hit this and then try it one more time there it goes still playing with things on a, on a live feed so that's what you get sometimes all of the crazy sizes are now part of the paladin store you can just look up paladin sleeves you don't have to go through the kickstarter um, as you can see sometimes they're on sale sometimes you get a little bit you are paying for shipping and it is very very expensive because shipping is now expensive everywhere that's just how it goes not a lot you can do about that but uh, they have different um names for things and they don't really tell you what games it's compatible with you'll have to go to board game geek uh they have some card sleeve compatibility uh spreadsheet and that might help you or you just measure it and get it within a few millimeters and that's the one you order they have the weird sizes for kingdom death they got the weird sizes for just about everything so they're a good company they make good sleeves um so you can look at the best sellers and probably find the things you need. They have many versions. So like the Paladin uh, Galahad is in yellow, is a similar size to the Fantasy Flight Games yellow. Uh, the red, same as the Fantasy Flight red. So that kind of helps uh, you figure out where it is that you need to be uh, and what games it could go for. Just make sure you're, you find if you want clear backs or you want matte or you want gloss finish look carefully at those details uh so you don't order something with a back that you don't like or you know the wrong finish um what do we have next the photon ultra so this is going to be the first resin printer i buy this is um on the way in march and i don't know you can see it makes pretty pretty uh stuff it's uh, going to have a little bit better detail. Even though it's a 720p signal, even than the 6K resin printers that are out there. Uh, hopefully it'll be faster. Hopefully it'll last longer. Uh, all that kind of stuff. So I'm a little excited to get this uh, and play with it and make some minis. I've already started collecting stuff off of various Patreons uh, that I've joined uh, from various uh, creators in order to including cripple god and the guys who have sponsored the channel which is nice um so i can start printing stuff off that i want to paint uh the other stuff that i bought is the anycubic viper which is a 3d printer that does fdm it is not an sla printer it is slow because it's fdm and it does one line at a time but it allows you to do lots of different um materials and there were some growing pains in it. Um, I'm, I've got some pieces I have to repair, uh, which, you know, certain design flaws that if you do any level of 3D printing, you're going to have to do a lot of repairs. It, the stuff just wears out, and that's just how the, the technology is. Um, but it auto be levels the bed, and that makes the prints very, very reliable. I would recommend this for people uh, that can afford the $360 pr uh, price tag. If you cannot afford one of these bad boys, and you, that $3,999 is for five tool heads. If you get it for one tool head, it's uh, $2,499. You can get it professionally put together. But this original Prusa XL does all the things I've been waiting for on an FDM printer. Um, it's got a big build size. It takes lots of different filament types and can have, as you saw, five different materials at the same time, which includes soluble supports and different colors and other things like that. So I put in a pre-order for one of these. I just uh, have to wait till sometime this year. It says Q2, Q3, but that's probably going to push out a little bit um, and I'll pay the rest of the money and I'm going to get one with two heads so that I can have the soluble supports. And that's something I've been waiting on for a long time to be able to make more complex prints and other crazy things. 
Um, this I think is going to be uh, free of headaches <laughs> for the most part because uh, it's an original Prusa. And um, yeah, these guys are the kings of this technology. So I uh, don't really expect uh, a lot of problems. Different kind of kings. Awakened Realms, Kings of Poland, and board games. They started out as a painting studio. So you can still click on it and go to their painting studio. Same website <laughs> from the look of it. But um, they have lots of different games that they're coming out with. Lots of things that they've partnered with. I have... What do I got coming from them? I have Nemesis Lockdown is on the way. I think there's some Etherfield stuff still on the way. Uh... And I don't think I have anything else, just Nemesis Lockdown. Um, but they'll definitely have something cool next, this year uh, coming out. But uh, I really liked Tainted Grail. Um, I played a fair bit of that. Uh, I still have been messing around with the um, storage solutions for Lords of Ellis. And Nemesis, I just haven't had a time to get people to sit down with me because, you know, everybody's got to mask up and all this other kind of crap. So, ugh, it's just awful. Um, another company, rather than messing around with all that, that I buy a lot of stuff from. Let's close these out. Blacklist Games. I have lots of stuff waiting to arrive. I have Dire Alliance, Lasting Tales, Street Masters, Tides of the Dragon, uh, Fantasy Series 1, Hour of Need, and some other pieces of just random things. Uh, Buddy Cop, I think, is uh, is one that's on the way. I've been waiting. Why? Shipping. Shipping has been the biggest problem for them, being a small um, creator, when the costs immediately ridiculously increased because of uh, the way China was managing their, the COVID situation. Um, yeah. So everything is just kind of sitting in warehouses. It was cheaper to build in a new warehouse to store the things in and wait till the shipping got cheaper, <laughs> less expensive than it was to try to ship it. And that's what their um, partner, I think Panda is their partner, ended up doing. It'll be available sometime. Most everything is already created. They got the new partnerships with uh, Mega Man. They got new partnerships with Boruto. They got the Contra game coming out. They got all these different games coming out. Um, I don't know if they're going to do it the same way. Brady Sadler has left to go to Lucky Duck. And Adam's still there. Scotty's still there. Um, the company's still there. So um, I can see you know, different opportunities pop up for different people. And uh, you got to chase those dreams different ways. They've got a lot of really cool people that are guest designing. And that's all this new stuff that you see down here. Myth and Goal was made by someone else. Mega Man Adventures, someone else. Uh, Baruto is made by someone else. It's not the Saddlers. Mega Man, it's not the Saddlers. But, you know, it's still got those core mechanics that if you played uh, one of their modular deck system games before, then it'll feel familiar here. Cellafair, uh, Cephalafair, no, it's Cellafair, Frosthaven, Gloomhaven, Founders of Gloomhaven, Frosthaven's still on the way, he's working on it, he's updating it all the time, uh, people are happy, it's been so successful with the new rules changes, it's even been integrated into the digital version of uh, Gloomhaven, so that part's good, um, I've been playing through that digital version, and it has really taught me a lot about the rules to try to uh, you know get other people to jump in and play the game with me and enjoy it and uh, I really really like the game I see why it's so highly rated uh, after I got to spend some time uh, playing it watching some folks uh, old bald guy gaming is one guy who uh, is doing an evil campaign right now and to see what he's got to go through and he's got a little bit more expertise than uh, I would probably have and uh, that part's been enjoyable. So when Frosthaven comes through, I hope it's kind of in that same app. Evil Empire, they're next. Cool mini or not. I bought a lot of stuff from them. What am I waiting for? Zombicide, Undead or Alive. I think that they've just finished production or are pretty close to shipping it. Massive Darkness 2 has shipped. Uh, at least it's left China and it's on its way to people. 
the Cool Mini or Not comics were the worst comics. It's one of the worst campaigns I've ever been a part of. Um, they are horribly written. Um, I just, you know, the art part, part is great. The thread of the storyline is great. But when it comes down to actually putting thoughts from characters and dialogue and uh, setting up <laughs> simple things like setting, um, they were terrible at. They just didn't ignored it entirely. So I don't know why they decided to cheap out on that, but don't buy comics from them if you just get the minis. Or don't read the comics if that's what you want. Just, just get the minis. Uh, Night of the Living Dead did arrive. Zombicide Second Edition arrived, and I have three minis left of the stretch goals that have been sitting on my um, monitor since August 23rd when my dad, I had to take him to the hospital. Uh, if you follow the channel, he passed away from COVID. And uh, I have put one coat of paint on one mini in the last four months. And it's probably going to be a few more months because I'm taking care of my dad's uh, finances, taxes, all that kind of cool stuff. Um, so I haven't had much time. But I do want to play Zombicide Second Edition. That would be awesome. Uh, along with all my other games from them. Dark Gate Games. I enjoy Dark Gate Games. Ancient Blood, Order of the Vampire Hunters just went live. I, of course, am picking that up because I like Order of the Vampire Hunters. It is like Zombicide with vampires, so that part's cool. Uh, you can get the soundtracks and things that go along with it. Um, as you see, they have other games that come out with if you click on all the different ones. Uh, Neomorphosis, I just... I had other games that were doing the exact same thing, so I just didn't need that one. Um, but I got Dark Rituals, and the minis are fantastic. Can't wait to paint those. Uh, next is Dimension Games. I did not like this art book. <laughs> it's made by some Chinese uh, artist and inspired them, which is great for Deep Madness. Deep Madness is a hard game. If you want a hard game, it'll kick you in the ass. Dawn of Madness is supposed to be a prequel to it, it is still undergoing revisions. So they radically changed the way a lot of the game stuff worked. And um, you got to wait for it. So that's just how that goes. Uh, I did not get Celestial. I did get Twisted Fables in the mail. The minis look fantastic. That's why I bought it in the first place. Haven't had a time, chance to play it. But, you know, uh, you know, maybe I can talk some folks into it. That might be, be one game I can get people to, to join in on. Then there is a game based on a comic book that is only on Kickstarter, uh, Few and the Cursed. So it has this lady, the redhead, and they fight these crows, and there's all these other folks that are part of it. And then there's a little bit of martial arts element to it. As you can see, it's 60 bucks. if you wanted to pick it up from Rock Matter Games. I really badly want to play this game. It looks like it's really well created. If you don't like random jump number generators, you don't like the dice, then check this out because it has a lot of options uh, for more strategy than just that fantastic art books and all the other crazy stuff that has been uh, produced for it and the comics have a great great story Simon should take a page out of these guys book and learn how to write or learn how to become a, a producer that says this isn't good enough and uh, see what these guys are doing to, to be the successful with their comic book runs because they're awesome. Uh, Lucky, sorry, IDW Games first. They went out of business. They are going to come out with this Ghostbusters Men in Black game, and uh, they're delivering all their stuff. I got the delivery for the Batman animated series game, and then they're closing down. So it's going to be cool, but uh, I would say their games might be collector's items with the TMNT adventure stuff. And, yeah, unfortunately, they just aren't going to be able to keep their doors open. And Lucky Duck. They have all kinds of stuff they're coming out with all the time. I played a lot of Chronicles of Crime, the new one. Um, I made a, a custom box and everything to hold everything in two boxes. So I didn't have a, just a bunch of things all sprawling all over the place. So you can see here, 1900 and uh, all the other games. I think they're great. I wish uh, everybody had a chance to play it. 
Um, it's best with an Apple TV and an iPad. I'm an Android person, but I got to tell you and admit that the connection between the mirroring for putting it on TV uh, really works as a party game, and it the connection is just best when it is combined with the uh, iPad. It doesn't matter which iPad, just any iPad that will connect to the Apple TV to uh, show the entire room what's going on in the visor and makes scanning easier and reading off the screen easier for everybody. And it's really the only party game my friends will play. So that part is that part. Then we have another studio that started out as painters and sculptors, Ludus Magnus. And there you have cool stuff all the time. I got Senna Tempera. I got uh, Black Rose Wars and the Black Rose Wars Rebirth uh, from them. The pledge manager on Rebirth, they just opened it back up and they added some stuff that was not able to be added in the um, campaign. You can now pick it up for, I think it was 20 bucks or something like that. Uh, not a ton, but it gives you the different houses that they weren't able to reach funding goals on. And that's always cool. That's uh, the Phoenix box, I believe. Uh, Mantic Games. What did I buy from them? I buy Hellboy stuff from them. Hellboy the role-playing game. That's what I picked up. As you can see, it's almost ready to go. They sent me a PDF. I got to read through the book. Um, that part was all nice. And then uh, there's also all of these uh, things that you can get to go with the board game. And I think they even had some expansions. They did come out with expansions, but I don't remember if it was uh this campaign or another one oh it's it's definitely another one so i'm waiting on the physical copies of this and they're ready to ship so hopefully they get over here soon uh and then monolith with uh conan the conqueror is supposed to be on the way batman gotham city chronicles season three um is supposed to be on the way soon I don't think Monolith has much of a website. If yeah, I was trying to. Uh, yeah, maybe it's this one, Monolith Edition. Um, you got to look it up sometimes. See if it's them. Yeah, here we go. Um, they don't really provide much information here, but uh, I, I'm waiting on Conan stuff. I'm waiting on the new Batman stuff. I didn't get Mythic Battles Pantheon because it requires more people than just me. But they do have an app for it now, so. Maybe that'll be cool. Um, these guys make fun games that are brought down by horribly written um, rule books. So hopefully that will change this year. We'll see how it goes. Uh, I, I skipped that and I went straight to Dark Raven, and that's why I had to look that one up. So Dark Raven Audio, you can get through Drive Through RPG. These guys make um, different uh, tracks and things for a ton of different games. They're out of Russia. And uh, they make ambient sounds. And they're very immersive. They're neat. you got to contact them if you want to use it for your streaming stuff. But uh, they seem to be pretty cool about it. So as long as you're not just selling or giving away their audio. Uh, you're talking over it. You're gaming over it. Then usually they're okay with it. Uh, there are some other things that are going on art-wise. I can't show any of these because there's nudity. Um, Olivia Debrard niece. If I bring up her name... She's mo mainly known for cheesecake art, pretty girl art uh, that you find in Playboy. She has a calendar that I buy every year. Um, and actually, let's uh, let's switch back to the other view. Okay, uh, as you can see, I buy it every year. Um, there are a few things from Century Guild and Baby Tattoo, such as Seraph and Existence with the Mechanism and uh, Alphonse Mucha print that I got. Um, those are neat. If you buy from Minipedia, Scale 75, I bought the books and I haven't had a chance to look at them. They've been sitting next to my desk uh, to the point where I don't even know where they are next to my desk anymore. Um, but I've been meaning to look through them. They are uh, talented painters and I'd love to be able to learn more of their, the skills that they uh, teach you as you look through their content. I just, as I stated earlier, life hasn't given me the opportunity to be able to do anything about that. Then we have uh, cooking as a hobby of mine. Um, a lot of this is going to change after I get my surgery in two weeks. But uh, for right now, uh, I thought the eat-off beat 
cookbook was interesting, but it, it is peasant food. Um, and it's not a derogatory remark. It's for people that are refugees from poor countries, and um, this is what they eat because they can't afford McDonald's. You know what I mean? Um, a lot of it was the same types of grains and different things that I just can't have. But all of it did look good. So there's that. Uh, going with that, then there's the gyms. Um, I used to go and do things a lot more, and then I needed to have uh, some level of exercise. And then now I've bought more home gym equipment, um, which in my life has kind of made these total gym things obsolete. If you see me, I don't look like I work out, but I you know, try to keep my body in some type of shape, uh, at least physically strong, to be able to, to get around and do things. And um, these Oyo gyms are very lightweight, so you can take them everywhere. And um, they have varying levels of resistance, but only to 45 pounds. And I really need something that's closer to 90. And that's like carrying around a whole Blowflex. So um, it does help. And as long as you don't pull a door off its hinges <laughs> while you're messing with it, then uh, you should be able to uh, work out just about any part of your body that you need to. RPGs. The Esper's Emporium of Esoterica, he already sent out, um, uh, he showed everybody the books, and I think he sent out the PDFs already, and they are going to get uh, the final um, paper stuff done, but there's a paper shortage on the ones that he wanted to use, so there's a little bit of a holdup because of that, but it's ready to go out and uh, be shipped out to people. Reaper Miniatures, I am waiting for... Reaper 6, I just, in Reaper 5, I didn't find so many things that I was really excited about. In Reaper 4, I still find things that I'm excited about when I go back and look through the collection of different things. So, uh, I highly recommend them. You can find them at your local game store. You can go to their website. They have a, a big uh, list, uh, just spreadsheet database, uh, trying to find the perfect mini for you uh, with a bunch of stuff going on. So, um, the paints were pretty good, uh, but I haven't used them on Reaper Minis just yet, uh, very often at least. I only painted a tree, but I did like the tree that I painted with it, so there's that. And uh, the guys at uh, uh, Goblin Golden Goblin Press, um, I as soon as I got Cold Warning, I was super happy, and I'm still super happy with it. And uh, I haven't backed anything else recently. I just haven't seen much going on. I think they did a Christmas-themed um, campaign maybe a year ago, two years ago. So uh, still folks are around doing things, and that's all neat. Um, otherwise, uh, I bought a ton of bookbinding stuff, and I've gone through my first rounds of experiments with that. I'm very happy with them. I can read everything. I can store everything. So if I bought a bunch of PDFs off of the DMs Guild, uh, which I did, um, then now I have the tools that are fairly inexpensive to be able to put them on a shelf, and I can reference them later. Um, the difference is, is certain things are happening in the RPG space with the new version of Dungeons & Dragons coming out and uh, the $130 box set. Uh, that gives you the new uh, Morden Cannon's guide to the, or Volo's guide to the multiverse or something like that. Um, the very popular monster manuals expanded and other content. Uh, they are going to be re redoing them for uh, <laughs> the new books. And um, so you might want to hold off on printing a bunch of stuff. Uh, unless there's something that you really wanted. Um for me, I know I really wanted to print off a bunch of uh, stuff about uh, Ravenloft and Warlocks and all that kind of dark and gloomy things that I thought were really cool, especially things about being a better detective because the investigator uh, sucks in the player's handbook. So, um, yeah, I, I just wanted more content that was a bit more useful. Lamplighter class and some others that I found uh, seemed to fit the bill for what I wanted. And... Um, one of these days, maybe I'll go through again and talk about that. I did get a request for the next year, uh, showing you guys how to bind the books. Uh, once I get a little more uh, mistakes under my belt and I fix them, then I will probably do another video 
uh, or series of videos just talking about how I am putting the collection uh, onto the shelf instead of into folders in the hard drive. And uh, who knows? Hopefully it gets uh, more uh, subscribers. Hopefully, uh, you know, I find some more faster processes to uh, make uh, it take less time to go through these videos. Um, you can share what you felt about 2021, what you think about 2022, what's coming up, what you're excited about uh, in the comments. That's all cool. I do these videos for you guys. So if uh, you're enjoying it, feel free to like and subscribe. And that helps keep motivated through the rest of the year, uh, especially the subscriptions. Um, a lot of folks even comment. It tells me when you're a subscriber or not. And um, it would be cool if, if the people that have been around for a long time and just been, you know, commenting and watching the videos because it's based off the algorithm. If you could finally hit that subscribe button, then uh, that'll help the channel grow. And uh, maybe they'll kick me back a couple of bucks this year. That would be awesome. But uh, as it stands, you know, I hope you guys have a good one. Love to hear about your, your adventures. Take it easy.